stationary nucleus p of mass 243 u decays by emitting an alpha particle of mass 4 u to form a different nucleus q as it's shown in the figure so here we have a nucleus p that is sitting at rest and then it decays by emitting an alpha particle in the right direction so the nu the nucleus turns into q and goes in the left direction after the decay the initial speed of the alpha particle is given as this so it's moving to the right with that speed use the principle of conservation of momentum to explain why the initial velocities of nucleus q and the alpha particle must be in the opposite directions now note over here that initially nucleus p has no momentum so the momentum initially is zero because it's not moving so the nucleus q and alpha particle must have same but opposite momentum so that if it's whatever p plus momentum this should be so for example if we're taking right side to be plus so this is plus p this should be the opposite of that p only then these two would add up to zero and so the conservation of momentum which states that the total momentum should be conserved will be consistent so we can say that the momentum p i is equal to zero of p this implies to conserve momentum the momentum for alpha particle should be equal but opposite to the momentum of the q nucleus right and then the conservation of uh, momentum will hold and that's why if uh, plus alpha uh, sorry plus p alpha is equal to minus p q p includes the velocity so it is basically giving information about the velocities it is minus v of q so that's why they would be moving in the opposite directions next part states that determine the initial speed v of the nucleus q so now we want to determine the speed uh, of uh, nucleus q uh, we will use the principle of conservation of momentum that states that the momentum initially is equal to the momentum finally initial momentum we know is zero and the final momentum is the total momentum of nucleus q plus the momentum of alpha particle now how do we find that this is just zero is equal to so for q it would be if you look over here it's of mass 243 u is p and q The mass would be the total mass minus the mass of the alpha particle. So the momentum, which is, remember, P is equal to M times V. This would be 243 minus 4 U. U is the atomic mass unit. And then you multiply that with the velocity V of this nucleus Q, which and V is what we want to find. And then you have plus for alpha particle, the mass is 4 U. And the speed it's moving is with minus 1.6 into 10 raised to power seven now this would give you if you do the math uh, the velocity would be 2.68 into 10 raised to power five meters per second so that's the answer next you want to calculate the initial kinetic energy in mega electron volts uh, of the alpha particle so that's again straightforward we know that the kinetic energy is given as half mv squared Right. So what would be this thing? So we would have half uh, M would be 4 into. So remember, we're talking about alpha particle, right? So alpha particle has its mass number as 4. So 4 multiplied by the mass 1.66 into 10 raised to power minus 27. That is the mass of the pro uh, positive uh, charge or the alpha particle and then you multiply it with when you multiply it with 4 you get the mass of the alpha particle and this is your mass and the velocity is 1.6 into 10 raised to power 7 and then square it this would give you 8.499 into 10 raised to power minus 13 joules now you're, they're asking in mega electron volts so we know that one mega electron volt is just mega is 10 raised to power 6 and electron volts is 1 0.60 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joules so this means that i can convert this into mega electron volts by dividing 8.499 into 10 raised to power minus 13 by 1.60 into 10 raised to power minus 13 so this 10 raised to power minus 13 cancels and you get 5.31 mega electron volts 
In the next part, this is we have a graph of a number of neutrons n against the proton number z, and it's shown in this figure. So you can see here we have the proton number, it is increasing in this direction, and the number of neutrons are increasing in this direction. The graph shows a cross that represents the nucleus P. So they're saying the nucleus P, which has a proton number of 95, and a nucleon number of 148 is this one. Now, a nucleus R has a nucleon number of 242, and in a, is an isotope of P. So, nucleus R decays by emitting a beta particle to form a different nucleus S. So, we had initially P, P decayed to Q by emitting an alpha, part, uh, alpha particle, and then now Q again further decays into R, but not really, uh, not like that, they, they never mentioned that Q is decaying into R, but then you have another uh, nucleus, which is R, and that decays into S plus the beta particle, right? Now, on this figure, we want to draw a cross to represent nucleus R, and we label the cross as R. Now, what is happening? We have P, it decays into R plus some neutron, N, and then R further decays into some S plus some, uh, you don't have to really know that it decays into plus uh, N as well, but uh, it R further decays into S and then it decays into, uh, sorry, by emitting a beta particle. So it comes out uh, to balance uh, the, the charges and everything, uh, the quantities, we also have an antineutrino, uh, which has uh, zero and zero uh, atomic numbers. Now, the number of neutrons for N of nucleus R would be 242, right, R, minus the proton number, 95. It's an isotope, so the proton number is the same, which gives me 147. Now, this is R, 147. So, 147, it lies on this line with the same proton number, so this is R. Then we have S. S is what? For S, we have 242 minus 96, right? Because beta particle has a charge of minus 1. So this would be minus, and this would be plus and 95 uh, minus 1, so it would be uh, 242 minus 96, which would give me 146. Now, 146 lies on this line. But remember, it is uh, 96, the proton number. So it lies over here. So what is happening is our nucleus initially starts from P, decays to R, so goes in this direction, and then it decays into S. So it goes in this direction. Now they're saying state the name of the other lepton in addition to beta particle that is emitted during the decay of nucleus R. As I mentioned, it would be an anti-neutrino.